I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight on Closing Arguments. And a, a big day in jury selection in the Ahmad Arbery case. As you know, Ahmad Arbery uh, was black. The three men accused of his murder, white. We now know the racial breakdown of the jurors who will make the decision in this case. Creating some controversy. We'll have a live report coming up in just a little bit. But first, things are underway in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Kyle Rittenhouse accused of shooting three people, killing two during the riots. And today, like other days in this case, lots of video evidence. And this is a case where really the lawyers, the prosecutor, the defense attorneys have to do their jobs to win this case because the videos are what they are. They show what they show. The question is, what exactly are they looking at? When I say they, I mean the, the jury, because they'll have to decide whether or not they're looking at a, a murder or they're looking at self-defense. It's right there on the video. And there's a lot of video of what took place leading up to that moment and video of what took place after that moment. What does it mean? Okay, Martin Howard is a detective with the Kenosha Police Department. He took the stand today and... Through this witness, the jury was able to see some video, but you also have the detective describing uh, what is in that video. Let's take a look. I'm just gonna point out the goodness. I wanna point out for the jury just so we can follow the action here. We have this individual is the defendant, Kyle Rittenhouse. This individual is Joseph Rosenbaum. And the individual in black with the white lettering on the back of his shirt is Richie McGinnis. Go ahead. Howard, I'm going to pause at this moment. Um, I don't think there's any dispute that we've heard a total of eight shots in a row there. I agree. And uh, I'm just going to explain. That. So, uh, Detective Howard, you've watched numerous videos of this incident, correct? Yes, this part was one of the focuses. And there were eight shots that we just heard. Uh, one of the first one was Joshua Zeminski, correct? Correct. And can you tell the jury what he does uh, with regard to that shot? So Joshua Zeminski is, at this time, you could see it on the Reg Incognito video. At this time, he's walking slowly uh, southbound on the, the West Sheridan Road sidewalk in front of Car Source. So Josh was walking right at about this spot right here while uh, the chase is going on in a southwest direction through the car source parking lot. Um, at that time, Joshua Zeminski has a handgun in his right hand and he raises his hand up in the air and fires one shot. At that time, Mr. Rittenhouse and Mr. Rosenbaum are running through the, uh, the car source parking lot. So. Mr. Zeminski's gunshot happens behind them. So as all this is happening, and I'm, I'm going to play another video for you, and we're going to mark it up a little bit so you can understand exactly what we just saw. Because there's different people involved here. You've got Joseph Rosenbaum, who gets shot and killed. You've got Kyle Rittenhouse, who's the one who shoots and kills him. Then you've got Joshua Zeminski, who was there at the scene. He's the first one to fire his weapon, and he is behind Rosenbaum, uh, when he just fires his gun up in the air. There's a fourth person who was there as well, very significant person, uh, McGinnis, who's actually a journalist who is tracking or following Rittenhouse around the streets of Kenosha. So four people there, very significant. Let's take another look at this video. Um, and, and again, we're going to try to identify some of the people involved here and slow it down a little bit for you.
Let's bring in Core TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, who's joining us tonight live from Kenosha, Wisconsin, where all this is taking place. This is significant. This is the first shooting. Um, this is what sort of instigates everything that happens afterwards, which are the, the following shootings. But this is important because here, um, leading up into this trial, we never really got a good look at what was going on. Uh, what does, does this video tell us about what was happening there? This today inside the courtroom, really a visual overload with the jury being able to almost look from every different angle that shooting of Joseph Rosenbaum, that first time they're seeing it during this trial and they're seeing it from different perspectives. And like you did in that, the prosecutor would stop a video and point out who was who, where they were in the video, and it was almost like conducting a class. The jurors were taking down a lot of notes throughout this, trying to understand, even leaning forward in their seat to really study the television screen in front of them about this video. But it's a huge moment because it's really breaking down what happened that night and who was where and what was being uh, said during that time in these videos and the commotion. You could really feel the mayhem of that evening, especially when those shots started to be uh, fired. And of course, they're saying Zeminski fired one shot. And of course, that led to the succession of fires from Rittenhouse to Rosenbaum, which this jury was able to see up close. Then there were shots even after that by some unknown person, correct? Yeah. Right. And that was also made clear today. A, a couple blocks away, apparently, Vinny, someone fired three more shots that they could hear in the video. The detective made that clear that that was not Kyle Rittenhouse or Zeminski, but some unknown person. All right, so let's focus in. This is a case of self-defense, right? So um, the big issue is who's the aggressor? So from these videos that we just saw, who's running after who? This was interesting inside the courtroom because the prosecutor stopped this video at a certain angle and told the jury to look at these two people. And clearly in the video, Vinny, you can see Joseph Rosenbaum chasing Kyle Rittenhouse into the parking lot of the ultimate gas station convenience store. You can even hear what Rosenbaum says to Kyle Rittenhouse in the video. And you also you notice Richard McGinnis, who I think will be a prosecution witness, but key for the defense here, who witnessed it all, also trailing behind the Rosenbaum Rittenhouse there that took also a key video in the case. Okay, and how about Zeminski? Where is he? Because he's the first one to fire his weapon. Is he close to these two guys? Is he behind Rittenhouse? Um, where exactly is he when he fires his weapon? He is in the vicinity. He's not in the key video that you see that we've all seen of Rosenbaum chasing Rittenhouse, but you have to kind of turn a little bit to see where Zeminski would be standing. It's not too far away, but it's obviously close enough to where it makes it think the defense wants to claim that that Kyle was alerted by that gunshot from Zeminski. So in, in terms of direction, it would be if, if Rittenhouse is is in front of Rosenbaum, is Zeminski behind Rosenbaum or is he behind Rittenhouse? Behind Rosenbaum. It, I believe that was what it was made clear. You kind of have to go across the street away so it would seem as though it was coming from across the direction, I guess behind Rosenbaum is really what it would be. Uh, and again, Kyle Rittenhouse is the one in the front leading. Then it's Rosenbaum chasing after him. And then you have Richie McGinnis after the two of them uh, having his video going. All right, let me see how all this affects self-defense because that's the ultimate issue in this case. Let's bring in our think tank tonight. Who's joining us in Atlanta, Georgia? Criminal defense attorney Eklund Mercy in Los Angeles, California, former federal prosecutor Nima Romani, and in Phoenix, Arizona, the attorney who represented Jody Arias, also the author of the book series Trapped with Ms. Arias, Kirk Nurmi is here tonight. Eklund Mercy, let me ask you. The prosecutor got up in his opening statement and was telling us that it was Rittenhouse who was chasing down Rosenbaum. Now we're watching a video inside the courtroom, and it's Rosenbaum chasing Rittenhouse. Um, how, how, how does that help prosecutors? I don't understand why a prosecutor would say Rittenhouse is chasing down Rosenbaum if there's a video that he's putting into evidence that shows it the other way around. Um, because Rosenbaum is dead. So I'm, I'm assuming that 
the person who uh, died, the person who was murdered, uh, was the person, you know, that that's just what it is. So with regards right, he's to dead, but we're trying to figure out who the aggressor is before the and, shooting. It's a self-defense case, actually. And so I, you got to figure out who's, yeah. who's making the first move but, here on who. Yeah, and, and what I feel, there's a lot of videos. So I, I believe that um, when, well, when I'm doing cases, there's a lot of video. Whatever I said in my opening, I'll be able to back up during videos. This is just one shot. So we have no idea what's in the prosecutor's bag. We have no idea what his um, strategy is with regards to this. So we can see, um, I've seen prosecutors do this, and it pisses me off. I've seen prosecutors do this often, in which they kind of um, show their their their, head, their hand and then kind of flip it once it comes, you know, once it's closer to closing. So I'm going to keep my judgment, because I, I, I do believe that this may just be strategy. All right, Nima Romani, you're the former federal prosecutor. Would you uh, tell the jury that the, um, the shooting victim was being chased if you're going to show them a video of the shooting victim chasing the shooter? I would, Vinny. I would do that in opening statement when I have federal agent Brandon Crammon, who testified yesterday. Obviously, we couldn't hear or watch that video, but apparently he it was the federal agent who's going to testify that the feds had some sort of aircraft that actually tracked Rittenhouse and showed that Rittenhouse was chasing Rosenbaum. That's what the prosecutor said in opening statement. That's what that witness, I believe, testified to. But again, the media wasn't able to cover that particular witness yesterday. Well, so let, let me ask you what I we're watching think. now, though. This is right before the shooting. This is right before the shooting. Nima, isn't isn't this the moment that is more significant than whatever w was shown off camera yesterday? But again, I don't know what that witness testified to. The whole basis of the prosecutor's opening statement was that aerial surveillance. Unfortunately, we don't know what it showed, but it had to have been good enough for the prosecutor to get up during opening statement and make that representation to the jury. Otherwise, you lose a lot of credibility if you do that and you can't deliver. Yeah. Uh, let's take a listen to this now. There, there was more video, Kirk, I, I want to show you. Um, and, and again, this is all talking about who's following who, who's going where, and there's video cameras everywhere. Let's take a look. This is from uh, uh, Kerry Washington, who is a, a, a journalist who was streaming live that night. Let's take a look. It's hard to catch at the very second, but uh, at any rate, Mr. Washington, we now know, oh, perfect, excellent. Uh, we now know that that is the defendant, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, running through the screen carrying a fire extinguisher. Um, you would agree with me on that, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, let's continue the video for a few seconds, and then I'm going to have you pause again, please. Can you give me an update no dispute on my guess. Okay. I'm going to represent to the jury. There's no dispute among the parties. There's an individual on the screen there that appears to be dressed in all black, but the back of his shirt has some white lettering on it. He's wearing a helmet, and that is Richie McGinnis. No dispute? Okay. No, no dispute. Please continue. Attention to it so you know exactly where to look. Go ahead. 
All right, let me ask you something, Kirk. Um, again, we're, we're talking about the video that wasn't shown to us, okay? So there's infrared from the FBI up in the sky watching everything. And the argument from the prosecution is that Kyle Rittenhouse is chasing Rosenbaum. Um, we just saw him with a fire extinguisher. So was he going to hit him with the fire extinguisher? What, uh, this is not making sense to me. Like, if, if he's following him before Rosenbaum is following Rittenhouse, why didn't he shoot him then if that's what he was doing? He's going after to kill him. Because uh, that's what prosecutors are telling us. He's got a fire extinguisher. I don't understand the prosecution story here. Clarify for me if you can, Kurt. Well, sure, Vinny. I don't think each, either, any of these videos in isolation is going to tell the story. So what I think the prosecutor is doing is putting together the different pieces of a puzzle in order to paint the entire picture. I, I consider the videos like puzzle pieces, right? And it will all go together. That EMT bag, that fire extinguisher, I think is important because it might remind people of another video where where Mr. Rittenhouse is declaring himself an EMT and having all this training, and he's the savior of this situation. So I think those all boil together in that video we didn't see that I think Nima uh, correctly referred to as being an important video. So I think it's just one puzzle piece, Vinny, well, could, to put could, could this it be, all together. Could it be that Rosenbaum was running to the same fire that Rittenhouse was running to, and he was just behind him, and then when he got in front of him, Rosenbaum saw him, and then Rosenbaum chased him down? Is that possible? I don't know. I'm looking at some video here. I, to me, it doesn't make sense. Like, if you're running after someone, how do you end up in front of them? If you're running after them to track them down and kill them, why are you in front of them? That doesn't make sense. And that's what the prosecutor was trying to sell me in his opening statement. Anyone. Anyone. Um, so here's well, the thing. I think it hurts. It hurts the defense because now he has a fire extinguisher. So at one point, he had to put this said fire extinguisher down and collect an AR-15. So I think that it doesn't help that we have a fire extinguisher. It just, he's not an EMT. He's not emergency medical anything. He's a random, a random person running around with a fire extinguisher while everybody else is standing still. The police isn't motivated. Nobody else is, is motivated to run. We have this erratic person running around who, do, who then has a fire extinguisher and now has the AR-15. That's a problem. Okay. Anyone else? You have, you have 15 way, seconds are, here. The defense argument isn't that Rosenbaum was chasing Rittenhouse. It's that he was ambushed, and that's the point they were trying to make during cross-examination. So the whole following whom... I don't think is where the defense is going here. They're saying it was lying in wait and ambushing him with the plastic bag, apparently. Yeah, but but I'm going by the prosecution. The prosecution has the burden of proof, right? And this and he sure. told us a story. It was a very compelling story. But then I'm looking at videos. It's, to me, it's not matching up. He told me that Rittenhouse was chasing Rosenbaum. But I'm watching a video, and Rittenhouse is in front of Rosenbaum. So you're no longer chasing him if you're in front of him. <clears throat> Right? I mean, that's common sense. I mean, there, there's got to be something in yesterday's testimony that we just didn't see. All right. Otherwise, I can't imagine him saying that. Hopefully, it comes out in the closing argument for all of us to understand. Hey, they're with us the whole hour, the think tank. They are great lawyers, great lawyers. Um, when we come back, we've got more. And, of course, more video of the other shooting. The first time the jury is, is seeing that uh, through a witness. So we'll talk about that when we come back.